Welcome, welcome, welcome. December 8th, IPFS Implementer Sync. Who's feeling excited? End of the year, finish strong. It's going to be great. Uh, short meeting today. We have a few items on the agenda. A uh, couple updates for on, uh, we got to talk about HTTP delegated routing. Some work is happening on the XFS spec. Uh, I think we got to talk about the uh, gateway CID resolution stuff. We have some movement forward on that um, from my neck of the curmudgeon woods on the IRO implementation. I think that's that it. Do we have anything else on uh, on the agenda? No. Uh, Steve, did you did someone want to kick off with the Google update or PL Andrews update? Did you want to? Can I put you in the hot seat there, or do we want to? Yeah, I, well, I, I think just the talking about the delegated routing, so we can let Gus take that one. Perfect. Perfect. Take it away, Gus. Sure. Yeah, I had some uh, some other updates about Kubo too. Uh, and uh, and infrastructure batch the stuff. I think... It's very important to batch the responses. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I wasn't here last time we had this meeting, but there was some discussion about the hydras. Um, we did turn them off, in the sense that uh, they are no longer caching DHT records. Um, they are still on. They they just act as a bridge for said dot contact. So hydra. So it's like. Hydro nodes in the DHT, they look like DHT nodes, but the only thing they return is records from SID.contact. And any any rights to them will just go to the trash can. Uh, we'll just go to DevNull. That's the stopgap until the uh, delegated routing stuff is completely rolled out. And then we'll, we'll turn those off sometime next year. Um, yeah, other Kubo updates. Uh, there's a release imminent, uh, probably tomorrow or early next week. We're going to release a release candidate for it that'll have DAG Seaboard, DAG JSON gateway response formats, and uh, um, web transport enabled by default. And the biggest change is that it'll be turning on SID.contact as a content router by default. So requests will go out to the DHD and SID.contact in parallel. That's it for my Kubo updates. Yeah, I, I guess can I inter well interject one thing? Uh, yeah, just to, to, to for for I guess for other implementers, uh, in the last Kubo release zero point seventeen, we enabled the GoLib P2P resource manager. Um, you know, there was a decent amount of feedback about problems that was causing partly UX, partly actual. Um, you know, we are now zero eighteen is having a set of follow ups based off of that feedback. Um, I guess just you know part part of the pain here is that Kubo existed for years without doing any resource limiting, you know, and now trying to introduce that after the fact, uh, you know, is much is much harder. People were, you know, used to things just kind of sloppily uh, allocating, etc. Um, so, just throwing that out there, I, I don't know. I, I wrote a story around its resource management, but uh, you know, if it hasn't been considered or hasn't been prioritized you certainly would uh, encourage folks to be thinking about it earlier. Obviously a lot easier to get those limits in and relax them than to try to add them on people later. Um, so that, that was something I just wanted to pass on. That's fantastic. Uh, it, do you have any concrete things that you know, like, like concrete pieces of feedback that people were giving like more frequently, like was it around network or was it around RAM? Was it around like what's, what resources were people or were people just experiencing degraded perf and frustrated by that? Like what was the, yeah, to, so the I say th I would boil it down to three things. Others feel free to to jump it down. One is we didn't do a good job of messaging that like this is actually a feature, <laughs> right? Like we are like the fact that we are now bounding your resources. This is a good thing. Um, uh, but we were logging this as an error, and like we weren't linking to docs that kind of made it clear of like, hey, what's going on? So that that that's that's one thing. Uh, another source of confusion is at least in GoLib P2P, a remote peer will, at least with Quick, will send an error back if it's resource managed, like if it's preventing new connections from being made. And the way that was coming in our logs was not clear that like, oh, this is a message I'm getting from the remote peer, not locally. Like the, it was very hard to distinguish between the two. So that was causing confusion. People were like, hey, I've disabled this whole thing. Why am I still seeing these errors? Um, so again, that's really around UX. Um, and then I think where, 
you know, where there's maybe more of a technical aspect is the main thing we're trying to limit uh, is beyond just a bounding the amount of memory that libp2p consumes let's restrict the amount of incoming connections and incoming streams uh you know we we by default don't place any limits on outbounding resources we like we trust that you're going to do the right thing outbound it's the in, inbound side that we're worried about um those were either too low or they weren't playing well with our libp2p's connection manager which intelligently prunes um connections right now there's a resource manager which is indiscriminate it's like, oh, you've hit the limit. We're going to drop it. It's not doing any prioritization. Um, the P2P, sorry, go the P2P has a connection manager which intelligently decides how to prune uh, those connections. And those things were disjoint. And uh, and in, and oftentimes in our case, the intelligent thing was never getting triggered because its limits were higher than the indiscriminate thing. Um, so I mean that's some of that's feedback for Go with P2P that ideally those things should be more interlinked. Um, we're having to kind of handle that at the application layer, but uh, yeah. So I think that's you know if I were, if we were doing all this from scratch or doing a new imp implementation, that would be something that I think we would want is again having making sure that there's more intelligent. If we're going to have to constrain ourselves, which is a good thing, let's be intelligent about what we're allowing in versus um, you know treating everything arbitrarily as the same. Love it. Um, I can follow up with our stuff later. I'd rather keep keep going away with Gus's bash update, and then maybe we can chat. Yeah. I mean, there's so the the spec since last time we looked at it has not changed that much for the delegated content routing HTTP API. Um, it's the the biggest update is that we we're rolling it out now. Uh, it's not going to be a experimental feature. It's on by default in the next release of Kubo and Sid.contact has already implemented it. Um, so uh, like just flagging that and if we can, we'd like to get as much buy-in from other implementations as we can that, you know, they're going to adopt this, this instead of reframe basically. Um, it's like my, well, I, I want to get out of this meeting a, a yes or a no as to whether like Iro is going to implement this. Um, that's really the big thing I want to get from this conversation. And, and, and also a date fully, for a date. Um, yeah, look, we can get a date. <laughs> uh, I, that would require me having fully done my homework and read the document. Um, <laughs> both late for this meeting and haven't done my homework. Um, might be a little bit of back pressure management on the personnel side here. But um, yeah, I, we can commit to a date. I, uh, okay. I get that to you by next week. Why don't we say next week? Is that so? Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, say Tuesday of next week. I'm going to write that on the notes. Decision. I guess yeah that, that that that's totally reasonable and makes sense Brendan at a at a high level is there any are you on the surface are is there anything kind of uh is there anything philosophically that you're all against or uh or worried about in terms of bringing in these uh you know bringing in indexers as a as a routing option for for IRO uh, no, so we already do support indexers. Uh, the question is just, I want to take, I want to make sure I carefully read through your spec, uh, Gus. As I understand it, it's new, um, and like we, the general sentiment around the ideas in Reframe were positive amongst our camp, uh, and the we weren't a fan of DAG JSON. We're generally curmudgeoning about DAG JSON, so like seeing this move over to HTTP is like, I think it's going to make it easier build as well. Uh, we already support CID.contact in our latest release of our, and so it's already there as a routing um, option. Uh, so I don't think, I think this is just a question of like, go read the document carefully across the T's, not the I's, make sure that we're all on yep. the same page of like, cool, we're going to make it actually do that. Um, and make sure I can provide fine grained feedback where that might change. But given this is rolling out in a production system, you know, the, I think it, the, uh, Onus is on us to either um, interject or uh, if we're going to interject and sort of phrase that as like a shorter, a more discrete set of changes that we can implement that's rolling updates in a non-breaking fashion. Okay. Yep. Yeah. The API is very similar to the one you've already integrated with. It's not, it's not, sub, it's just like some tweaks to schemas and stuff. That's sick. Yeah, this is great. Look at this. Yeah. The light will just link to a human readable URL with Ooh. human readable output. Oh my goodness. Who would have thought? Oh my goodness. Wow. Is this 2022? The future. <laughs> the future is now. 
I prefer this JSON. <laughs> I mean, I'm making it crazy. I should say, pardon me. For folks at home, we shouldn't use such a slight, you know, slight of hand speak. The gateways can now give us some of this human readable stuff, which is really nice. And the format is really easy to understand, thanks to the work that Gus is doing. It's the thing that we're all excited about. All right, cool. Uh, so oh, so I'll that's go back it for the, sorry, that, that's it yeah. for the delegated routing. Fantastic. Uh, moving down our agenda. We have heaps of us spec. What's going on? Um, so I published yet another draft of the Unix FS spec. Um, it's not quite correct still, but I'm mainly looking around feedback for, um, is there anything that is not covered you, that you think should be covered? Um, and if you see some things wrong, just point it out, uh, we'll look into it. Uh, so it's mainly asking for comments. Uh, I guess that's also coming from us. Um, I have not even cracked the, the I'm so behind, but we will, <laughs> I will, I, there is a case on our team has implemented most of virus Unix best work. I will ask her to take a look at this. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Um, I'm just, so you know, I'm looking to close it out next week, hopefully. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. Next week, okay, cool. Um, I'm adding another to do V5. Spec, okay, lovely. Moving right along. Uh, next is CWAR CID traversal pathing. Uh, Lyle, you have a small update and then I think I can follow up. Um, yeah, so. Uh... Mm, my understanding is like there were like no functional changes to the code, but we did the cleanup of. I mean, we we removed the mention of UnixFS from that HTML return, but that's like cosmetics. But uh, I believe uh, Enric updated uh, IP IP uh, to remove our IPLD aspirations and instead keep it on limited all the pathing being limited to uh, Cyborg Tag Forty Two and it's. Uh, Cbor and JSON uh, representations, uh, and, and that's that's all. Uh, the the by pre-existing pathing, we mean uh, the things that are already um, in the in the, being used in the re real world, namely the Cbor document, which links to UnixFS document. Um, so not uh, that was like already uh, the, the, it was being used already in the wild. So. It's not something we can remove, but uh, we are not uh, changing any behavior around that. Uh, and I had discussion with uh, 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 Adin. I believe uh, we, in the beginning of the next year, we will probably create a separate spec, uh, just like we invest the time to document the UnixFS behavior. We will create a specification of pathing for IPNS and IPFS uh, namespaces. Because it feels over and over again, it's be something like that needs to exist to be referenced by other specifications instead of being copy of the same content in gateway specs, uh, some CLI tools, uh, IPLD resolution tools. Um, so I think that will be a separate spec, and that also will be where this IPLD, like the third namespace, will also uh, could also exist. Uh, I, I guess that's that's it. I don't know, Enric, do you have anything? Uh, no, I think that covers everything. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and this uh, like Cibor on gateways and then JSON on gateways will be it's already like merged and uh, scheduled to be in uh, RC one of Kubo eighteen. It will be before uh, uh, holidays, so also we'll have plenty of time to uh, play with it and adjust because we'll most likely will have RC two in January. Perfect. Um, super exciting stuff. I think it's great. I, I love the idea of uh, having like an IPLD pathing spec as a place to house this giant rat's nest conversation around how we're actually going to tackle that. Um, I think it's really the right way to approach this. Uh, the update I have from my side or our side or the IRO implementation representation 
is we yeah we so we've talked about it internally um including external <laughs> basically everybody and and thank, thanks to the way that this was phrased it's pretty easy for us to all get on board with uh, the 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 emphasis on support attack 42 i think really was a win that i think three meetings ago uh we identified and it's yeah so on our side i think it's going to be really straightforward to adopt and, and implement such a thing in our gateway and so you should get consistent behavior there uh which is fun and yeah and i think that's nice now we leave with cool let's do this Iro will implement this uh we'll also uh now have a space to like talk about how we keep going with the IPLD namespace and like how that should look and what that should look like. So peaceful resolution, great, awesome, ratified, let's go. Uh, do we, <laughs> at least from our perspective, I've, I, I think we can now just say, we, we've crossed, the, the conclusion from our side was like, yeah, you know, like the, the, we don't love the corner this backs us into, but this is already a corner that we are in. And so, there, there's nothing to argue with here, right? The, the gateway should just render stuff properly. Uh, so yeah. thank cool. you yeah. everybody for, for making some carve outs for us that made this really easy to say like, yes, this is um, this is totally something that we can get behind. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I think like we, I'll drop a comment that it's more, more or less like ratified and, uh, but, but we'll keep that PR open until we uh, ship and implement like the stable Kubo 18. Uh, so just in case we can add a more context or whatever. Have yeah, why don't we just call it ratified and you can merge it whenever you feel it's mergeable. Really? That... And then, then you know, uh, I want to like set, like decrease the noise in the repo. So, you know, if mm -hmm. there's like IPIP, like we merge it and we essentially like don't touch it again. Yeah, no, totally. And, and so yeah. I think, well, I think we're saying the same thing, Lytle, basically just, yeah. I would vote to approve. And as it is, yep, yep. we all trust that you're not going to, in the dead of night, change the bill before signature. <laughs> and so um, I think it's great. And so like, once you feel like it's in a good spot for merging, then just yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I believe the force push is disabled on the specs repo. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm not worried at all. I'm far more, uh, <laughs> the biggest thing is we don't want to be a block on you, you know, getting yeah, close yeah. to the holidays and just being able to hit that button. So it's like, okay, it's in we can all cool cool feel like progress is made all right because if i if, if you're waiting for me to respond to a github issue that might be the difference between no no I, I'll, ju the, I'll just drop yeah. comments like summarizing this uh, meeting like reference the meeting notes and i think we are good yep cool uh so i'm just gonna write down that decision and then i think what do we have left uh, i have a couple updates. of logistical things here uh, brendan um yeah. One one is and you not not to put so there's a meta and there's a specific one. What's the best way to be following along with what's happening with Iro? Um, mm -hmm. it may, you know, I am definitely not on top of all the channels if this is happening in IPFS implementers, like totally fine. But and it's like if you guys just aren't at a place for that. But uh, at the same time, if there is a place where you guys are sharing, um, mm -hmm. you know, we obviously want to make sure we're consumers of that or. And then I guess tangibly, is there anything in this meeting that you want to share about what's happening with Iris so that folks are aware? Like, because I, I, you've got great projects like gateway checkers and and things like that. Mm. that like, you know, other implementers might want to to to, to know about. But like, if that's all been talked about somewhere else, and I just need to go read, like, happy to go do that. Oh, I'll happily accept your invite to shill our own discussion forums and complicate all of your lives. Are you kidding? <laughs> just let me quickly share the screen here. Uh, we do everything just in discussions. Um, okay. So this is where, uh, hey, you want to know what we're doing in terms of mobile? You want to know what we're doing in terms of hours library? Like, so this is IPNS support, you know, question here. So we try to just like surface question, give concrete answer, give real timeline. Um, and so we've been trying to sort of nudge folks towards here. Mm -hmm. The other place we want to nudge folks, I'm not going to show everybody my very messy Discord, but is the IRO channel in the IPFS uh, Discord. It's the place that all, uh, the public space that all our maintainers watch. And so if you post anything there, it's being, it's picking, sending push notifications to our maintainers. So if you want sync conversations, we wanted to actually, as an IPFS implementation, we didn't want to like spin up another um, public chat forum 
and mm -hmm. we thought it'd be really nice to just sort of like layer onto the existing IPFS Discord, um, which is bridged in a number of places. I, I'm not going to get into the bridging conversation, but there. Uh, so yeah, those would be the two. Those are the two high level spots. We also have a uh, we run a Discord for Number Zero uh, that is by nomination, and so if folks are excited, and a number of folks on this call can nominate folks into that Discord, which is where we do a lot of the discussion side of things. Um, so if you want a more like regular set of contact with uh, number zero teams, you are definitely talk to somebody uh, and get a nomination into that group. Anybody can nominate. They don't have to be a, nine, a number zero staff member. Uh, that is, there are, the expectation on that server is that if you're in there, you are going to participate. And so it's a higher bar of, um, of usage. And we routinely will do a, hey, if you don't, we'll, we'll do like kind of a regular culling of it. Um, the main idea there is to keep everything really high signal so that folks working really intensely on the project have a, a space to to know where they can get the attention of people um, fast. Yeah, so those that's are the three channels. That's, that's a discussion great. IPFS channel in the in or uh, IRO channel in the IPFS Discord, and then if you're really hardcore, ask anywhere for a nomination to the number zero Discord. Cool. Okay. Great. And is there like. I don't know. Are there like release notes or yes. certain status, oh, up, yeah. status updates for people to follow? Like if someone, you know, they just want totally. to catch the highlights of what's going on with IRO. Yeah. So our release notes are uh, this is not, this is our change log we need. Um, change log here is super detailed. We get like very similar change log to what you see in um, uh, Kubo, where like we actually have per commit. Um, we use a commit convention that generates that automatically. And then we also do for each release, we do a handwritten set of release notes. Uh, and so you can see that from our actual, these ones are quite brief because this is mainly to get us on crates.io, which is Rust package manager. But our more intense releases, like we talk about our bit swap client mode support, um, indexer node support is all documented here. Uh, Docker support was all came out in the release. This is us doing the Unix fest kernel in 20 seconds, which I'm very proud of. Uh, but the, yeah, so this is all here. And release notes are there if you if you need them. So cool. Sense. Yeah, yeah, that 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 that's great. Um, I guess. I, I, well, I mean, we because we do it, and I think it's appropriate to make sure others feel that they can. Obviously, I think we do drop uh, in kind of our weekly update in the implementers channel. I, I I'm hoping that hasn't been spammy. If people aren't feeling offended by that, I certainly invite other implementation teams to do it, whether that's on a weekly or monthly basis. Not that you need to do that, but I think that's an option. And certainly if, if it's ever useful to sh uh, shine any lights with the IPFS blog um, on the work that that you're doing. I mean, the IPFS blog is intended as a common good. Um, and so again, the, the, the blog right now does not get a ton of traffic in and of itself. I guess some of the utility is just that it is a durable URL that's with it's durable URL. that has got a, you know, a strong domain name in front of it that like okay, gives some officialness to it. So if, uh, like I just that, you know, it's, it's certainly welcome to, you're certainly be allowed to like, Hey, we want to give a recap of what happened with IRO in 2022. Um, and we're going to, we want to surface that or just give a redirect from it from the IPFS blog. That's totally legit to go do. Um, so view, view those things as tools to help amplify your implementation work. I don't know how effective they are, but just want to make sure you know that they're available. Awesome. I did not even think to do that. Big lab, and that's a great idea. We will start doing that. I'll give everybody a weekly of that because that way I'll, at bare minimum, I'll just be able to push to all of you here so that you don't have to come to us. To find out what's going on in Ireland. Um, yeah, we'll do new practice for the new year. Okay, rock on. Yeah, just the, the all options, nothing expected there. Um, and, and then, yeah, logistics. So, Dan, uh, I think you're probably aware of this that uh, Daniel Norman, uh, two color on GitHub, was set, setting up an IPFS uh, Luma group. I see he's got move the bytes in there and IPVM and maybe some other stuff. So, I think he, he was coming to me saying, like, hey, can we move the implementer sync? over to this, um, which, you know, I think we had, we had talked about a couple months ago, but just like no one had the resolve at the time to make it happen. Uh, so I guess if, given that you've kind of been in both of these camps, I think Brendan with leading multiple working groups, do you have any concerns with us shifting this over to, to Luma? I don't even fully know what that's going to mean, but I think, yeah. So I just wanted to see if the group was okay with that as compared to letting it be authored in the IPFS community Google Calendar. 
we've run into, I mean, I'm personally a fan of Luma. We've run into a couple of issues with even with Mythobytes where the one challenge you run into with Luma seems to be if you move events around, it can really cause confusion <laughs> because calendars can become desynchronized. And I don't think Luma has like a great answer for, for that like ad hoc. Um, so I, I personally, even with that caveat, think Luma is great. And like, particularly from an organizer perspective, um, <laughs> apologies, Gus, who has written a chat that he has not recovered from with the bytes for scheduling. Uh, my only recommendation would be to just do meetings, maybe a couple meetings in advance. It ups the chances that you will um, get it right. But personally, I'd love to see it all in one in one place. I don't know if others have thoughts, but it's my two cents. I'm also fine to leave it as is. I don't really care. This is working. Yeah, fair. I, I, uh, that, yeah, I don't really care either, other than it's like Daniel's trying to do something here. So I just wanted to like get out of the. If Daniel has the initiative, I think we should totally just let Daniel run with the ball and let's do it. Because if someone's willing to do the work, awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, I am not. That's no, not enough. Yeah. Anger yeah. Or anything, just, that, that makes time. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that makes sense. Cool. All right. So I think we'll empower Daniel to, to do it. Um, I think right now on the IPFS.tech community page, we kind of just point to the Google Calendar. Um, but we should also make sure I think we get a posting to this Luma so that folks can see it. Because unfortunately, there's not a way to invite the community calendar to IPFS or sorry, to the Luma events. So they unfortunately are disjoint um, things right now. That is what it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. I, I will empower Daniel to go run with things. Um, and then I think, does that cover it? That, that covers it. Uh, so this is our last meeting for the year, correct? Yep. We will pick up in the new year. I vote that we asynchronously decide on what uh, IPIPs we're gonna evaluate for ratification in January um, because January sounds so far away right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, so thanks everybody for joining. I think this is great. And uh, yeah, have a lovely rest of your. Yeah, likewise. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.